So the time is 5.45 p.m. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Silk Road A1A Safety Improvement Project. My name is Talib Shams, and I am the project manager with the Florida Department of Transportation. I will now turn it over to our moderator for this evening. Thank you, Talib. Uh, my name is Carolyn Fitzwilliam. I'm a member of the communications team. We will get started with the presentation. This hearing is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and provide input. This hearing is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar, and over the phone. If you dialed in today on a telephone line, the PowerPoint presentation is available on the project webpage at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445690-1. That's www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445690-1. For online participants, the GoToWebinar control panel should be visible in the upper right corner of your computer screen. If joining GoToWebinar on your mobile device, simply tap the screen to display the same options. The blue arrows in both images point to where you will find the question box. You can type a comment or question into the question box, then click send to submit your question or comment to staff. The red arrows in both images point to where you can find handouts, documents, and comment forms for this public hearing. Click the handouts icon to see available handouts. Click on the file name to download. If you happen to experience a technical issue during this hearing, please type the issue in the question box on the corner panel on GoToWebinar to report it or send an email to mercedyz dot m-i-t-c-h-e-l-l at Q-C-A-U-S-A dot C-O-M, that's Mercedes dot Mitchell at Q-C-A-U-S-A dot com to report it, or you can also call 727-810-4688. Staff will do their best to assist you. We encourage your input and feedback about this project. All public comments and questions are part of the public record, and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by July 26, 10 days after the public hearing, will become part of the project's public hearing record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing following the hearing. This public hearing is being recorded. A verbatim transcript will be made of all oral proceedings. A recording of this presentation will be posted on the project's webpage within one week following the hearing. There are multiple ways to submit comments or questions. You can make verbal or spoken comments. If attending in person, please fill out a speaker request card so we will know you wish to speak at the podium during the public comment period. Online participants that requested to speak when registering will be called upon during the public comment period of the public hearing. If you do not request to speak earlier and wish to speak, type your name and, quote, I wish to speak, end quote, in the question pane on the GoToWebinar control panel. When your name is called, you will need to unmute yourself on the GoToWebinar control panel before speaking. Lastly, if attending as a dial-in participant, you can call the project manager at 386-943-5231 to provide verbal comments after the public hearing. For those in attendance at the in-person location, you can complete a printed comment form. If you are participating online, you can submit written comments in the question box on the GoToWebinar panel. Written comments can also be submitted on the project website at www.cfl.com. R-O-A-D-S 
com forward slash P-R-O-J-E-C-T forward slash 445-690-1. That's www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445-690-1. You can also contact the project manager, Taleb Shams, directly by email at T-A-L-E-B dot S-H-A-M-S at D-O-T dot S-T-A-T-E dot F-L dot U-S. That's Taleb dot Shams at D-O-T dot state dot F-L dot U-S or by U.S. mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 542, Deland, Florida, 32720. This contact information is also available on the public hearing notification that you may have received by mail. The Florida Department of Transportation is required to comply with various non-discrimination laws and regulations, including the Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about the Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, District 5 Title VI Coordinator by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720, by phone at 386-943-5367, or email at j-e-n-n-i-f-e-r dot s-m-i-t-h-2 at d-o-t dot s-t-a-t-e dot f-l dot u-s. That's Jennifer dot Smith two at dot dot state dot fl dot us. You may also contact Jacqueline Paramore, State Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 605 Sewanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida 32399-0450, by phone at 850-414-4753, or email at j a c q u e l i n e dot p a r a m o r e at d o t dot s t a t e dot f l dot u s that's jacqueline dot paramore at d o t dot state dot f l dot u s this information is shown on a sign at the in person location on the project website and in the hearing notifications. This public hearing was advertised in the Florida Administrative Register on FDOT's public notices website, in the Palm Coast News Tribune newspaper, and on social media and on the project webpage. In addition, adjacent property owners, interested individuals, elected and appointed officials, and government agencies were also notified about this public hearing. This project is located on State Road A1A in the town of Beverly Beach in eastern Flagler County. The project limits run from north of Ocean Marina Drive to just south of West Mayor Place. The purpose of this project is to enhance vehicle and pedestrian safety. The existing conditions on State Road A1A include one lane in each direction. There is a sidewalk on the southbound side of State Road A1A and an existing crosswalk at the Beverly Beach RV Camp Town Resort. There are no designated bike lanes or signalized intersections. The proposed typical section from north of Shelter Cove Drive to the Beverly Beach Camptown RV Resort entrance will include raised medians and sidewalks. The project will mill and resurface the roadway, upgrade driveway connections, and improve drainage. The proposed typical section from the Beverly Beach Camptown RV Resort entrance to south of West Mayor Place will include a left-hand turn lane from northbound State Road A1A to Surfside Estates, raised medians, and reconstructed sidewalk along the southbound side of the road. There will also be an upgraded mid-block pedestrian crossing at the Beverly Beach Camptown RV Resort. The improvement will include the reconstruction of the existing sidewalk and adding approximately 465 feet of new sidewalk south of the new crossing. The project is also considering the use of pedestrian activated lights to further increase driver awareness and crosswalk visibility. The pedestrian activated lights that are being proposed are called Rectangular Rapid Flashing Beacons or RRFBs. The flashing lights give more visibility at marked crosswalks to alert drivers to pedestrians. The two rapid flashing yellow lights are mounted below a yellow pedestrian crossing sign. They remain dark until activated by a pedestrian wishing to cross. When pedestrians come to the intersection, they push the button to activate the beacon. You can find the button on the pedestrian crossing sign under the Look Push Button for Warning Lights sign. The lights located above will begin to flash to alert motorists of the pedestrian's intent to cross the street. 
After pressing the warning lights button, pedestrians should look both ways before crossing and make eye contact with drivers. Pedestrians may then enter the crosswalk when motorists have come to a complete stop or there is no traffic closer than safe stopping distance. Pedestrians should continue to look in both directions while crossing the street. The RRSB is a tool to help drivers recognize a crosswalk and see that a pedestrian wants to cross. Under Florida law, drivers are required to stop at any pedestrian crossing when pedestrians are visible. Once the lights of the RRFB are activated, drivers must stop and wait to proceed until the pedestrian is no longer in the travel lane. For more information on Rectangular Rapid Flashing Beacons, or RRFBs, log on to www.alerttodayflorida.com. That's www.alerttodayflorida.com. The tip cards are available at the in-person meeting site and can be downloaded from the handout section of the GoToWebinar for those attending online. The proposed design will also accommodate parking for beach access north of the Beverly Beach Town Hall. Specific design details are still being developed. Once construction begins, the department will keep at least one lane of State Road A1A open at all times. Drivers should expect lane closures and flagging operations, which may cause some delays. Access to all businesses and residences will be maintained. Design on this project is anticipated to be complete in early 2022. All work is being done within the FDOT right-of-way. Construction is expected to begin in fall 2022 and is estimated to cost $1.4 million. To learn more about this project, you can go to www.cflroads.com, that's www.cflroads.com, enter the project number 445-690-1, in the search box at the top of the screen and click Go. Then click on the project name. Public hearing materials are posted on the website now, and a recording of this public hearing will be posted to the website within a week of the public hearing. We'll now enter the formal public comment period for this project. Anyone desiring to make a verbal statement regarding the project will now have the opportunity to speak. Please note, to ensure all who wish to speak are able to, all questions and comments will be responded to in writing following the public hearing. Remember, if you want to leave a verbal comment or question over the phone, call the FDOT project manager at 386-943-5231 after the meeting. Again, you can provide verbal comments and questions in one of multiple ways. To comment at the in-person location, you can state your comments at the microphone. You will need to submit a speaker request card if you have not already done so. If you are joining us online, use the GoToWebinar control panel. If you did not request to speak when you registered for the hearing, you can request to speak by typing in the question box on the control panel. The last way to comment verbally is to call the project manager at 386-943-5231 after the public hearing during normal business hours. We will now call all person participants who have requested to speak. Please come to the microphone when your name is called and state your name and your address. If you are represent an organization or other topic party, please provide the information as well. We ask that you limit your comment to three minutes. Please keep in mind that we are will be responding to all comments in writing following the public. The hearing. Sherry, could you please? Jim Howard, do you want to? Yes. My name is Jim Howard. I live at 195 Monitor Drive, Beverly Beach, Florida, and I'm a commissioner of the town of Beverly Beach. I would like to know if there's some way we could receive um, all the dimensions and and just a a diagram of where the lanes are placed, how wide they are. Um, also, um, just, uh, just, just to get an idea of where they're going to put all this uh, construction. So that's all I have. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Thank you for the time. I'd like to thank the DOT, 
to lead the staff and Ron me. I've been involved with this since conception, and I appreciate it for making the town of Everly Beach safe again. Also, I bring with me the consensus of the commissioners and a vote Monday. We totally agree with you, and we appreciate it. Um, the only question I have is, uh, I see the dates are subject to change. Will any of those dates, as far as the conception of the design, change? Today, no. Today, no. <laughs> Today, no. And I think what, what Jimmy's looking for is, is more or less in the design, you'll have your schematics where we can look at them and stuff like that and see where the footage are going and where the sidewalks are going to be and stuff like that. That's what we're kind of looking for. We have some other variances that we're going to have to do to go forward, but I appreciate it. And I do thank you for making the town safe. Thank you. Uh, Lee Question. I just said yes. No. I didn't know if I had water. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> what about Patty Rosie? I also wrote down that only if and they were answered. Okay. <laughs> Ed Fenley. Thank you. I'm uh, Ed Fenley. I live at 1339 South Central Avenue in Flagler Beach, Florida. And I want to say thank you. This looks fantastic. And my only question is, is how can we get FDOT to do similar projects in Flagler Beach <laughs> along North A1A? Maybe I'll ask you two folks. Uh, but I do want to pose that question because our commission and those of us living in Flagler Beach recognize that we too have a serious safety problem. Frankly, as does all of Florida. Regrettably, Florida is 50 out of 50 in terms of road safety. So we'd love to improve and uh, we'd love to uh, learn what it would take to work with FDOT to bring about safety improvements on North A1A and Moody Boulevard, but also potentially other roads such as Central, Flagler, and um, uh, Daytona, which also have safety risks. So thank you so much for doing this. Uh, my family and I are frequently in Beverly Beach and uh, to be able to access all the awesome things in Beverly Beach a little more safely, uh, we're, we're very grateful for. And again, we, we, we would just uh, love to spread the love uh, a little further south. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm uh, Ellen Bindani. I'm at 106 Anchorage Drive. My question is, if you could just elaborate a little bit more on your statement that it might affect beach access, is that only during the construction or after in the handout it says, um, if you could just maybe provide a little more details where it says the plan improvements will affect some parking areas near the Beverly Beach Town Hall and beach access, if you could elaborate. All questions will be answered in writing. Uh, is it Stephen Emmett? Yeah. <laughs> and I would like to thank you and your staff for showing up and doing the presentation. Uh, for the people that don't know, this was in process, it's been probably in the last eight to ten years when we first identified the problem of safety in the town of Beverly Beach. The walkover and the accidents we had, people are unaware of it. We had two fatalities, one right in front of the campground where a lady was killed on a motorcycle and one down at Osprey Point where one pulled out and uh, was hit by a car and was killed. In fact, he was one of our commissioners at the time. And there have been other accidents and near misses. So we look forward to this coming because you know we've tried desperately to get the speed limit reduced and we just couldn't seem to do it. And I think this will be a very plus thing for the town. Plus, it's going to add some beautification to us. Okay. And thank all of you for showing up today. Good. Thank you. That's all I know. Did anybody else want to get up and see? It was pretty good. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Shirley. Thank you, Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Richard Hamilton. I was not sure in the car because I didn't know what you were going to cover. And I don't actually live in Beverly Beach. I live in the uh, Hammock Island States. 
Um, but I cycle through Beverly Beach regularly. I'm, uh, I cycle down here tonight, and I think it's a, it's a great project. Um, I have one question. I do actually represent the A1A um, Senate Committee on the Flagler County Traffic Safety Team. I don't know, was it Matt Downey from Flagler Beach is working with uh, the DOT and trying to solve some of those problems a bit south of here. In your presentation, you referred to the sidewalk. Now, that's a little bit more than a sidewalk. It's part of the uh, trail that goes all the way through Flagler County. So it's a multi-use trail. Are there any plans to, uh, could probably do a bit of widening to make it safer for the various users that do it, not just the pedestrians, cyclists, I think there's uh, carts allowed, uh, golf carts allowed them as well. So a little bit wider would be good for, I think, for everyone who's actually using that as a trip. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Shari. Now we'll see. I'll turn it to Kern and see if, if any speaker on, on, online. <coughs> Thank you, Talib. Um, as a reminder, for those who are attending online, if you would um, like to speak, please type I wish to speak in the question box, and I will call on you um, to provide your comment. When we do call your name, you would need to unmute your microphone. Um, if the microphone button is orange, that means you're muted. If you click on it, it will turn green and you will be unmuted. When you do um, speak, please state your name and address. If you represent an organization, a municipality, or other public body, please provide that information as well. Um, and again, we just ask that you limit your comments to three minutes and all comments will receive a written response after the public hearing. At the moment, I don't see anyone who has requested to speak, but I just want to give you, oh, maybe. Yes. Um, um, Dale and Rebecca Mitchell, you should be unmuted now. Should be able to unmute yourself. Yes, am I unmuted? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we live at 2719 North Ocean Shore Boulevard, and initially I would like to, as others have, thank you very, very much from the bottom of our hearts, the beautification program and safety program you are bringing to our little small community, and thank you also for the wonderful job you did on our dunes. We're very pleased. Uh, we do have a small issue with uh, drainage on most of the homes on the beach side of A1A. Uh, our driveways are elevated and they dip towards the road and then dip back up just before the road, creating a large pool of water just off the road. I'm wondering if you're planning on elevating a road, whether or not this will compound that problem um, as we do not have any type of drainage system in place by the city or the county, only what we do on our own lawns. Um, or maybe this is something you've already taken into consideration and have addressed. Thank you. Thank you. And again, we will respond to your comments in writing afterward. So thank you so much. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? If so, please type it in the question box. Hey, Talib, I do not have any more speakers. On behalf of the Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public hearing and providing your input on this project. If you have comment or question after the hearing be submitted by July 26. The contract information, the recording of this public hearing, the logic document, and other experts made in public hearing will be posted on the project website at www cflroads.com slash project slash 445690. Have a good evening. Thank you. And those for, um, who are joining us online, again, a reminder in the handout section, there's a copy of the presentation, um, a comment form that you can download, an exhibit from tonight's meeting. Um, as well as the tip card. So I'm going to leave it open for just a minute or so to allow you time to download those handouts. And if you do have any other additional questions or comments, you can type them into the question box. 
So I'll leave it open for just a minute or so. Thank you very much.